Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. If you'd like a quick update on how the first 100 rounds in our Savage 110 BA Stealth chambered in 338 Lapua Magnum performed, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you want to see how I and the rest community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. In today's video, we're going to be doing things a little bit unconventional for the channel. We're going to be talking about three different powder combinations, two different primer combinations, and three different neck tension settings all in the same video. To be frank and honest, right from the start, guys, this is not how I intended to present this information. I thought I would break it down by powder type, talk about how different things happened during how these things shot. But regardless of some of the best laid plans, sometimes things just don't work out the way we wish they would. But just because things didn't work out the way we wanted them to, doesn't mean we shouldn't let you guys know what's going on. Coming to this project right here, if you'd like to know everything that's going on, I'll put a card up so you guys can go catch up. But essentially, this is kind of the summary of our first 100 rounds. We bought ourselves 100 pieces of nice Lapua brass, and we thought during our fire forming process, we'd actually do a little bit of testing. We'd mess around with a couple different powders, mess around with a couple different primers, change up the neck tension settings, and see actually what performed the best. If you're used to my content, you'll know that usually I'll show groups on the screen, but for this video, I'm not really sure it's important. I'll let you know right out of the gate that actually I had a little bit of a problem with the rifle and to make an extremely long story short, basically some of my screws loosened up and I didn't actually find all the screws that had loosened up until I had actually been through all 100 rounds. They were shot over a couple different days. Initially, I thought that only the screws from the Picatinny rail into the action had come loose as my scope was wobbly after one day. So after I fixed that problem to take it back out, the next day after we were done shooting, I actually noticed the screws from the chassis into the action had loosened up as well, and I think honestly that might have been the most significant problem that I'd had. That being the case, I can't really go back and change anything, so I really can't adjust my group information to be fair to the loads and how they actually performed. However, we did have the chronograph attached to the rifle, we did get the velocities, we'll have some extreme spread and statistics to talk about, so we might as well get right into it. The loads we chose, we didn't vary the charge weights through all of our testing, all we really did is change the primer and the neck tension, and like I said, test three different powders. For our H1000 loads, we actually tested 95 grains of H1000. For our Rotembo loads, we actually had 96 grains of Rotembo. And for our Reloader 33, we had 97 grains. I could sort this data 16 different ways, but we're trying to be as fair as we possibly could. To be blatantly honest, our Reloader 33 loads were shot initially, and that's when our action was still the tightest. So, if we were to actually sort all this data by group size, Reloader 33 would win hands down. However, when you actually adjust for statistics and we actually look for the load with the best standard deviation, H1000 goes right to the top. Along with our 97 grains of Reloader 33, we actually tested both, as you can see, the Remington 9.5M Magnum Rifle Primer, as well as the CCI 250. In both of those configurations, we also tested three different neck settings. Basically, without modifying the expander ball whatsoever, we used whatever the expander ball dimension gave us from our Forrester Benchrest die. And then in addition to that, we use our Sinclair Mandrel die to actually use both an expander mandrel and a neck mandrel to set our neck tension either one thousandth or two thousandths. I'll probably post our chart on the screen so we can talk about it and you can look at it as we go. I might actually sort it as we kind of go. If we actually sort it for group size, Reloader 33, would certainly be at the top. However, with our action screws loosening up, I'm sure that drastically affected our results. And I also forgot to mention that our projectile is actually the 225 grain SST by Hornady, part number 33202. No offense to this projectile, but a long-term load for this projectile is not what I was actually shooting for. These were some fairly reasonably priced projectiles, and I thought they would do a reasonable job of breaking the rifle in, and hopefully still allow us to get a reasonable baseline to start what I'll call our real intended load development. Out of this, we honestly hope to pick what would be the first combination of both powder, primer, and neck tension settings that we will use moving forward. And I honestly think, even though we ran into all these problems, we'll be able to do that. So, as moving down the list, trying to be as fair as we possibly can, had we sort by group size, we would actually see that Reloader 33 would win hands down. But, since everything tended to loosen up during our process, it really wouldn't be a fair comparison. And honestly, it would probably lead me down the wrong path. So, for today's analysis, we're pretty much going to be sticking strictly to evaluating this by standard deviation and extreme spread. If you caught the initial 10 round in video when I was breaking in, 
and I'll put that chart up real quick. You'll know that we talked about the Reloader 33 not really giving us a velocity we were expecting. Seeing as this is a lighter weight for the caliber, that the Reloader 33 being a slightly slower burning powder, it really wasn't the right choice for this weighted projectile, at least certainly not in this load. Most of our loads average a little over 2,600 feet per second. As you'll see when I put the chart up, our other two loads were somewhere running at around the 2950 range. Certainly much larger velocities. It is very likely that because we should have had a much more full case with the Reloader 33, that might have actually gave us some better statistics. It certainly wins the award for the worst extreme spread at 94, and to go along with it, the worst standard deviation of 38.7. To be fair too, those were some of the first rounds to the rifle, and as we shot more, some of the statistics did improve. If we sort by standard deviation, you'll obviously see that the clear winner selecting the powder is obviously H1000. Out of the six different combinations of H1000, the top four standard deviations go to H1000. Not saying that's going to be the case for any other loads going forward, but it's a hard trait to ignore. So, in all fairness, if we were going to rank these, H1000 would be my first choice, Rotembo probably second, and Reloader 33 coming in third. But like I mentioned, it's very likely Reloader 33 will work better when we start testing some heavier projectiles. Now, the next thing we really need to select is what primer we're going to use. Keeping us sorted by standard deviation, it's fairly obvious, at least it's fairly clear to me, that the CCI 250 in this particular case is the clear winner. Though I certainly wouldn't say a finely tuned load, our combination of 95 grains of H1000, the CCI 250, and two thousandths of neck tension certainly gave us the best statistics out of all of the loads. A standard deviation of 3.1 and an extreme spread of 7 is nothing more than I could possibly imagine out of my first string of load development. Had it had a better group than 2.165 to go along with it, I would have been a happy man. But sometimes we just don't get everything in life. So since we've kind of picked H1000 to go forward, the CCI 250 looks like our best choice out of these two primers, at least for the testing we've done so far, then we need to pick our neck tension. Kind of hard to ignore, it almost seems that no matter what combination, that when we had our neck tension settings at, at two thousandths, no matter what combination of powder or primer we chose, those seem to actually be the best standard deviations as well. So it appears, at least for now, we were able to achieve better statistics when we had increased neck tension. At least for our first set of reloads, two thousandths is where we will be setting the neck tension. Which, if you're familiar with my process from 6.5 Creedmoor, you might have figured that's probably the direction I was hoping to go anyway. So I would have really loved to tell you exactly how well everything shot and how well everything performed and show you the groups to go along with it, but it really wasn't the case. If I was to go through, you guys would just be looking at a lot of groups that were over 2 MOA and some that were even over 4, and let's just be frank, that's really not what we're looking for. I don't want you guys to think I'm getting down the rifle. I don't think this is all the rifle's fault. I do feel that there's a lot better performance in here, and we're certainly going to go looking for it. Hopefully you're not too disappointed. I really would have loved to do my standard video talking about one combination at a time, talking about selecting the primer and neck tension for that specific powder, while also seeing if our groups actually played into that equation. But things really just didn't work out the way we wanted them to work out in this case. So moving forward, if you caught the last video, you already know, we've actually changed the stock out. We had to move our scope position back to try and get an acceptable eye relief. I have a little bit more room to move the scope back even a little bit further if I need to. I'm hoping I can get away with that adjustment. Otherwise, we might have to come up with a new mounting bracket or something of that nature to get this thing configured to set it up for my eye relief. I don't want you guys to think it was a total loss. I do think we've actually got some good information. I would say if I was going to go shoot some more of these SSTs, H1000, 2000 neck tension, CCI 250s would be exactly where I would go. Certainly seeing an extreme spread of 7 right out of the gate was much more than I ever expected. But again, who knows what those groups would have ended up being. The world just may never know. So guys, since we started, I've actually procured several different projectiles to start with. I have several Hornaday options. I have a Sierra option, two different burger options. All things working well. You should see those coming down the pike somewhere soon. Hopefully more back towards my normal format and hopefully with a lot smaller groups on those projectiles. One more quick note guy I didn't mention. You will notice on the sheet when I put it up, I did shoot five rounds of factory ammunition just to ensure my velocity was kind of where I expected it. 
The average velocity was either 2878 or 2847, depending on which website you believed as the estimated velocity for that projectile. So, and we achieved 2773, obviously with an extreme spread of 38 and a standard deviation of 14.4. Not exactly what we were looking for with those 250 grains here in Match Kings, but it was pretty much the cheapest factory ammunition that I could find in stock. And I really was only using it to get a baseline to ensure the velocity on this rifle was somewhere close to where we expected it to be. Probably a good thing. It'll give us a little bit of extra brass to use for ciders and that kind of thing. So moving forward, we'll have some ammunition to warm the barrel up before we actually get started with our groups. So now that we've gone through all of our data, all of our brass is fire formed. We're ready to start moving on with some serious load development in this rifle. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you guys have a pet load for this that you're dying to share? Especially if you have this rifle, I'm interested to know what were some of the safe loads that you could actually get in this rifle and with only the 24 inch barrel rather than some of the data seems to be at 27 inches, what velocities were you able to achieve with those projectiles and still maintain safe loads? I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions on the video, please put those in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. There's certainly going to be a lot of more content with 338 Lapua coming down the road. And if you turn on that bell icon, you're going to get notified when it comes out. But anyway, like always, guys, until next week, stay safe in small groups.